name, whosoever believes in him shall receive remission of sin. Whosoever, whosoever, whosoever. <laughs> you know, the world does a lot of judging. If the world saw you and I before we got saved, they say, you know, those people, not, they're not worth it. They're just not, what are you talking about? Man, our church, we got people that drive nice cars and wear nice clothes and got jewelry. And here's these people come dragging in here and old cars about to fall out and, and smoking like a freight train. And they get their clothes at the Goodwill and, and that kind of stuff and, and get coupons for the Mexican joint and all that stuff. Hey, that's us, brother. That's just me. I'm just an old dirty scumbag sinner. But thank God one day I heard the message of whosoever will and it worked for me. Thank God it worked for me. Whosoever will. We are not, we are not Calvinists. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We're not tonguers either. We are not tongue speakers. We are not charismatics. Come on. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 13. Watch it now. It says in verse 8, Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fall, shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. I was talking to a guy one time about this verse here. I said, the Bible said tongues are going to cease. He said, well, what that's talking about is people die. Well, you nit, don't you understand? Can't you read the context of what it said? The context is the, the spiritual gifts. And he said tongues are going to cease. Why is that? Because tongues were for a sign. That's why. We are not tongue speakers. Uh, we speak so folk can understand. At least I try. I understand sometimes I don't do the best. But I ain't trying to talk in tongues. I'm just, that's just me. But you understand here that we are, we're, not, we're not tongue speakers. Uh, we're not going to babble in some unknown language that nobody can get any, any benefit out of. Look at 1 Corinthians 14, next chapter over. Look at verse 22. Wherefore tongues are for a sign. Not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. Now, right away, the charismatic will say, well, when we speak in tongues in our church, it's a sign of the lost. No, that's not what he's talking about. He said that those that believe not, but prophesying, serveth not for them that believe not, but for them that believe. That the, the unbelievers here was, was Israel, and they required a sign. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, just a minute. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 21. He said, but after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God, and it pleased God by the foolishness of the preaching to save them to believe. How are you going to believe something you can't understand? Are you listening to me? He said in verse 22, for the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. Do you understand what he's saying? Those, uh, that, that gift was for a time uh, when we're in transition. Those spiritual gifts were there until the complete word of God came. And every time you find those men preaching to Israel down there, there was accompanying a sign or a wonder somewhere. They had to have that sign. But we're not tongue speakers. And I'll tell you something. I praise God for that. I thank God that I came and sat in the church where the old man of God spoke English to me. <laughs> and I understood what he said. I understood what he said. What a, what a madhouse. Paul said if, if, a, if a lost man comes to your congregation and somebody over here is speaking in one tongue, somebody's another, somebody's singing, somebody's preaching, somebody's taking up an offering, kid, kids are doing this, kid, teenagers are doing this, he said they're going to say you're crazy. And he'd be right about that. God's not the author of confusion, and therefore we're not tongue speakers here. I've told you this story. One day you get to meet this fellow. There's an old boy got saved up in another ministry. Up in Ohio, I had. He worked with a guy that didn't care about his soul until he got saved, and then all of a sudden he wanted to tell him to go to a tongue speaking church. And he asked old Brother Cotton, he said, what would, uh, what would your preacher do if I got up in your church and spoke in tongues some service? And Cotton never batted an eye and smiled. He said, he'd kick you right, and I won't say what he said, he'll kick you. He said, you're welcome, no to come. <laughs> and after he said, preacher, I tell him right, I said, you told him right. Amen, tell him again if he needs it. Well, I'm going to tell you something. God's not the author of confusion. And I know those are big churches. And I know they really grow. And I know, man, people love that kind of stuff. But we're not charismatic. We believe the Word of God. And I'll tell you something. Thank God there's enough for me to learn in English, let alone some other tongue. I'm still working on that. Miss Bethany, she's going, to, she's going to tutor me on how to speak the English language. Anyway, notice this. We're not tongue speakers. Look at Psalm, 20, Psalm 122. We are not the vineyard. Mm -mm. Some of y'all going to unhook me right here. You're going to unhook? I can just hear the coupling coming out of the wagon right now. You're going to unhook me right now. I love you. First, uh, in in uh, Psalm chapter 122. 
Verse 1 said, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We are not a vineyard. We are, we are a church. This is the, we call this the house of the Lord only simply because we, we come here to worship. We meet together as a church corporately to worship. Look in your Bibles at Luke chapter 8, just a minute. Luke chapter 8. Luke the 8th chapter. You say, why is that important? Well, you'll see in a minute. Luke chapter 8. Look down at verse uh, 27. Luke, uh, the 8th chapter, and verse 27. And when he went forth to, to land, there met him out of the city a certain man which had devils long time and wear no clothes, neither abode in any house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God, most high? I beseech thee, torment me not. Here's this guy running through the tombs, and the Bible said he was naked. And he was wild, he was screaming, and nobody could tame him. But he met Jesus, and when Jesus got done with him, look down at verse 35, Then they went out to see what was done, and came to Jesus, and found the man out of whom the devils were departed, sitting in the feet of Jesus, clothed in his right mind, and they were afraid. Now, the two differences in this guy was he had his right mind, and he was at the feet of Jesus where he was running, but he also had some clothes on. We are not the vineyard. I've said this many times. If unsaved people come here to church, I don't care how long the guy's hair is. I don't care how many body piercings. If he's got more body piercings than a, than a Chrysler Imperial, it doesn't matter to me. I don't care. If a, while a lady comes to church here and her dress may not be appropriate for church, uh, that's all right. We'll preach to them and love them and try to win them to Christ and teach them. But I expect God's people to set the standard. I expect God's people to come to church here. And if you got a choice in your clothes before you leave, choose the clothes that you would wear to the house of God. Amen. Amen. Do you have a mirror? Check it before you leave the house of God. Leave, leave your own house. Now, if you've got to come from work, you come to work from work. I don't care if you're greasy. I don't care if you're nasty. Come from work. Doesn't make any difference. You don't have a choice. Come from work. If you're sweaty and nasty and greasy, we don't care. But if you've got a choice before you leave the house, go by your mirror and say, am I going to a picnic or am I going to the house of God? Come on. Come on. There are some people, men and women, should not wear stress pants. You listen to me? I was passing a boy the other day. It looked like two wildcats fighting in a gunny sack. Some people, check your mirror. There's some clothes don't look good on us. We ought to check it out. Come on. I heard the couple unhook. This house of God, don't be a hypocrite. Don't get dressed up to go to a wedding or a funeral and, and come to the house of God looking shaggy. Come on. Amen. I didn't say you had to have nice clothes. Didn't say you had to wear a shirt. I'm not saying that. Don't go out here and say what the preacher said. But I'm saying we're not the vineyard. We're not your biker church. We, we come to the house of God. We want to look like we're going someplace. And if all you got is a pair of blue jeans, wear your blue jeans and be proud of the thing. Amen. We're not the vineyard. I'm not going to get up here with my, you know, my uh, shirt half unbuttoned, my hair all spiked up. Cute, 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 big old son. We're not the vineyard. I'll tell you something else we're not. We're not Orchard Street Baptist Church. We're not Orchard Street Baptist Church. Orchard Street Baptist Church was raised up for a time and a period of time and a, and a witness and a, and, a, and a message and all the rest. We're not Orchard Street Baptist Church. We are Faith Independent Baptist Church of Heber in Kentucky, Incorporated. And I'll tell you something. I thank God for the memories, and I thank God that maybe you got good memories, but we need to quit living in the past. We need to move on. This is a new church and a new day and a new age. And somebody say, well, here's what Brother Chuck would have Brother Chuck's not here. Brother Dave is here. Come on. Thank God for Brother Chuck's ministry. Thank God for the other ministers who ministered in that church all those years. Thank God for the blessing they were, and they'll have their reward one day at the judgment seat of Christ and have their crowns and rewards for 